Hello everyone and welcome to my Bachelor Nation 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Gold Rush fans list complaints about current season. Gold Rush fans have started complaining about the recent seasons of the hit reality TV show. There is sometimes a limit to how long the show can last before things get monotonous. This season's Alaskan bush people rated higher than it has in years, and that was because of a change in structure with Billy Brown's death. While Gold Rush fans aren't asking for a death, they want changes to make the show interesting again. Gold Rush fans complain about recent seasons. This season of Gold Rush has seen Parker Schnibble continue to thrive. Tony Beats has kept rolling as one of the most successful miners the show has ever seen. Fred Lewis is the less experienced of the group and makes things interesting with his questionable decisions. However, none of this is enough to keep some older fans interested in the show. A Reddit thread started with the title, I think I'm tapping out after all these years. In the thread, the OP wrote that they used to relish my gold rush couch surfing time. They said they loved what they described as suggestible engineering and discovery. However, they then said that is not what the show is about anymore. They wrote that the entire show feels dry and boring. According to the OP, the show used to show huge engineering issues, dredges, plant moves, people with back problems welding all night, and Parker and Tony butting heads. They then said the last episode showed someone using a shovel and another trying to get more comfortable when sitting. They finished by saying they were bored to death. This brought a lot of like-minded people to the thread. One person agreed with them, saying the production crew must have changed and they are just lazy. Another person said that the entire playbook never changes. It is start the project, run into difficulty and deadline, then in last two minutes, Viola, everything works out. One person responded that the problem this season is the lack of Rick Ness. He was the perfect compensation for Tony and Parker, where everything runs so smoothly without sucking too much. With all that in mind, there are some fans who think that the slow-moving first part of the season is possibly leading to something big. On reality TV, the production team shoots everything and then pieces it together to create an interesting season. I feel Gold Rush main show is about to turn. They flash through a lot of stuff fast, and now we are going to get to some interesting bits, a Redditor commented. They then mentioned that Parker is setting up his new deal in Alaska. They also hoped that Fred might do something other than wine and the Winchester boys could latch on to something interesting. Rick Ness could even return. However, they said that the show looks like it is setting up for something big to turn it around for the last stretch of episodes. The air was crisp and filled with the scent of freshly churned earth, the kind of scent that promised gold to those daring enough to seek it. But this season of Gold Rush has left fans with more frustration than gold fever. As the sun dipped below the Alaskan horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson, a chorus of complaints echoed through the fan community. The current season, despite its breathtaking landscapes and high-stakes drama, seemed to miss the mark for many devoted viewers. At the heart of the discontent is the pacing. Once a show that balanced nail-biting tension with moments of triumph, the recent episodes have felt like a slow crawl through the mud. Fans have taken to social media to voice their frustrations, lamenting the drawn-out sequences and lack of significant progress. It feels like we're watching more digging and less gold. One fan commented, their words capturing the sentiment of many. The excitement that once kept viewers on the edge of their seats now seems buried under hours of monotonous footage. Then there's the issue of character development, or the lack thereof. The miners we've come to know and love feel more like shadows of their former selves. Parker Schimbel, once the young, ambitious prodigy, now seems burdened by the weight of repetition. His struggles, while genuine, lack the spark that once ignited viewer engagement. 
Similarly, Tony Beats, the larger-than-life king of the Klondike, appears more subdued, his legendary temper and audacity replaced by a sense of wariness. Fans miss the dynamic personalities that initially drew them to the show, the human stories interwoven with the pursuit of gold. The introduction of new cast members intended to bring fresh energy has also met with mixed reactions. While some viewers appreciate the attempt to shake things up, others find the newcomers lacking the charisma and depth of the original miners. The chemistry that once fueled the show's appeal feels diluted, and fans are left yearning for the authentic camaraderie and rivalry that made previous seasons compelling. Technical issues have also plagued the current season, adding to the frustration. From poorly edited scenes to inconsistent sound quality, the production values have taken a noticeable dip. Gold Rush has always prided itself on immersive storytelling, but the recent episodes have been marred by jarring cuts and awkward transitions. The technical flaws disrupt the narrative flow pulling viewers out of the experience just when they should be most engrossed. The environmental impact of gold mining, a topic that Gold Rush has occasionally touched upon, has also sparked debate among fans. With increasing awareness of climate change and ecological preservation, some viewers feel the show glosses over the environmental consequences of the miners' actions. They argue for a more balanced portrayal that acknowledges the delicate balance between human ambition and nature's resilience. The call for responsible mining practices and environmental stewardship is growing louder, and fans hope the show will address these concerns in future episodes. One of the most significant complaints, however, revolves around the lack of significant payoffs. Previous seasons were punctuated with thrilling discoveries, moments when the miners struck it rich and the audience shared in their jubilation. This season, the big finds are few and far between. The constant setbacks and dwindling returns have made the journey feel more like a slog than an adventure. The thrill of the hunt, the anticipation of uncovering a fortune, has been overshadowed by a sense of relentless toil with little reward. Yet, amid the grievances, there remains a core of loyal fans who hold out hope for a turnaround. They reminisce about the early days of Gold Rush, when each episode was a treasure trove of excitement and drama. They believe in the potential of the show to recapture its former glory, to reignite the passion and adventure that once defined it. These fans continue to tune in, week after week, driven by a blend of nostalgia and optimism. In the face of mounting criticism, the creators of Gold Rush are undoubtedly taking note. The show's success has always hinged on its ability to evolve and adapt to listen to its audience and respond to their desires. As the season progresses, there is hope that the pace will quicken, the characters will rediscover their spark, and the thrill of the chase will return in full force. In the end, Gold Rush is more than just a show about digging for gold. It's a testament to human determination, resilience, and the enduring allure of the unknown. Despite its current shortcomings, it holds the promise of adventure and discovery, a promise that keeps fans coming back, season after season. As the Alaskan wilderness stretches out, vast and untamed, the miners continue their quest, and somewhere in that frozen expanse, the next big strike